Welcome to this week's episode of Bow Hunter Die. I'm Todd Graff, and as you can see, Justin Zar is not with me this week as he decided to take a vacation and chase a tan. Personally, I know these cooler temperatures have been getting me a lot more excited out there to grab my bow and to get in the stand. Take a look to see what we have in store in this week's episode. Todd goes over some tips for tree stand and general hunting safety and we'll introduce you to some of the bucks that you'll see our teams chasing this fall. With the archery season right around the corner, I know a lot of guys are out hanging stands. Now, here's a few tips on tree stand safety that everyone should follow. You know, I didn't realize how many people don't know about the different tools that are available to make their hunting experience and hanging stands a lot more safe. You know, we all think about the easy stuff, it's shotgun season, it's rifle season, wear blaze orange. Um, you know, a lot of that easy stuff comes natural to us, but when it comes to hanging tree stands specifically, there's a lot of tools that can be used that's gonna make it a lot safer for you. First off, I'm gonna show you the number one thing that I will be using on every one of my sets this year, and that's called the linesman rope. This piece of equipment right here, by far, will save your life in the case that you have an accident in a tree stand. Again, it looks like a simple apparatus. It's no big deal. It's just a piece of rope. But let me tell you, this right here can absolutely make your entire hunting experience a lot more safe. This particular one here is made by Muddy Outdoors. It's very easy to use. Unfortunately, you have to climb the tree the first time using either your safety harness with a linesman that goes around the tree for when you're climbing vertically. But once you get to the top of that tree, what you do is you take your linesman rope, you go around the tree, then you put this through like this, and you drop it all the way down, okay? Now, what this does is it gives you, the moment you walk up to the stand and you clip on with your safety harness, it gives you safety the entire time from when you make that first step onto that climbing stick and you begin to work your way all the way to the top of that tree stand, you are always attached this rope through this Prusik knot, okay? This Prusik knot right here would attach directly onto your safety harness right here. So you basically would clip on and you begin climbing and as you climb, you just take your hand and you slide this rope up with you as you get into the tree stand. This linesman rope is by far the safest way to climb your tree stand and to climb out of your tree stand every single time because you're always attached to the rope. If you were to slip making that first step getting out or you were climbing and you weren't paying attention and you made a slip, you're always attached to the rope. Top of the line product. I absolutely recommend that every one of you buy some sort of lifeline mechanism and put them in your sets. Um, Hunter Safety Systems also makes a linesman rope. Money Outdoors is the one that I've been using. Uh, I literally bought over 50 of these this year for all the different sets. Uh, whether I'm on my friend's properties that I'll be hunting or my own properties, you gotta have these in place. Top of the line tool. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about, of course, is just the safety harness. Um, this year, Scent Blocker came out with the Tree Spider. Great product, lightweight, now this particular product here is designed for easy, easy fit, easy to put on. Um, this is the one I'll be using. This is actually mine. You slide it up, simple clicks to get on. Some of the old ones were really difficult to get into and you ended up feeling like you were working with a, felt like you were fishing or something and you had a big knot that you had to work with. This one goes on as you saw very easily clicks right on. As you can see, this is your clip right here. So the moment I get to my tree stand, whether it's four o'clock in the morning and it's pitch black, or whether it's that uh, evening hunt you slipped in there, the moment you get to your stand, you click on to your linesman rope and you start going all the way up. Anytime you have an accident, you were to slip, you were to fall, something were to happen, one of your straps came loose, a squirrel chewed on it, all different things can happen, boom, you're always connected and you're always safe. So this is gonna be the safety harness that I'm gonna be using this fall. 
Um, they also make a full-blown vest that can go over all of your gear. It just depends how you like to hunt or the different style you prefer better. This is the one that I like, but I know a lot of people prefer the vest as well, where it's your last garment that you put on. So that's another thing to think about. Now, this next little tip is my own personal one. Um, this is made by Leatherman. You can see that I actually have it attached right here to my belt. The reason why I like this Leatherman here is because of this clip, okay? We all have heard about suspension trauma, or if you haven't heard about sus suspension trauma, log on to our website, do a search for it. Suspension trauma is a situation to where if you're in a tree stand, even though you have all the proper gear on, there's still a chance that a fatality can happen. And basically what it is, is if you were to slip out of your tree stand and you weren't able to get a hold of that tree, or you weren't able to get yourself back on an elevated platform, you can actually die because you end up cutting off the circulation to your heart right here because of the amount of stress that's on your body with these harnesses. What I always do is I keep a handy Leatherman tool with me. You don't even have to open it. That is the reason why I like this particular model specifically is because all you have to do is the knife opens from the outside. Heaven forbid you had to cut yourself out of your harness, you could. Now, all the, most of these harnesses now also come with an additional um, attachment that allows you to get a relief. Basically what it is is attached right here. Heaven forbid you find yourself in an awkward situation where you slipped out of the stand, you were on the, in front of the stand, or you were behind the stand, you couldn't get to your sticks, you couldn't get to anything. What you do is you reach around and you loosen this other attachment. Mine's not attached right now. The rope drops down and you can step into it. And that will give you relief from being stretched out and potentially dying from suspension trauma. Now, what I've always done is I've always kept a knife handy and easy to get to. Again, that's why I like this Leatherman. Simple click. A lot of times I leave it here. Uh, a lot of times I just leave it over here. I know that's always on my vest no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm hunting, hanging stands, I always have it with me. Heaven forbid I found myself in a bad situation, I know where my knife is and I can cut myself out of the situation. Um, okay, again, simple things, but when you're climbing and hanging sets, you got to use the vertical climbing systems as well. This makes your life so much easier and safer. All you do is click on. Put this around the tree, click back on to you, and now you've got this around the tree and you've got the ability to keep your hands free for hanging the sets, cutting limbs, doing whatever you got to do, and you're not pulling the, holding on with one hand and then just hoping that uh, you're strong enough to do that through the whole process. You can't beat these vertical linemen's belts. There's also other products available. Uh, I know Tree Hopper makes one um, where it's just a device for hanging sets. Tree Hopper is another one that you can use. Um, again, this is the one that I use here, and I've had a lot of luck with it. Simple things. This isn't even a, so much a tool, but it's a lot of things that we just we, we, we forget about. Every time that I go check my stands, you always got to be checking your straps, guys. All it takes is a, a squirrel to start chewing halfway through one of these, you know what, sometimes you come to a stand maybe two years later, you haven't had a chance to trim it out or check it out, and those trees are growing and they can grow right into these ropes. You got to check your ropes out every single year. It just so happens this year that Lone Wolf has changed their color, and they also have this handy tag right here where you can actually write the date of when you got this new um, traction belt. Um, so very important to know when you put your belt out there. Very important to make sure that if you start seeing them getting weathered and getting old, to change them out. So uh, real important. This would be a good year to kind of pay attention to that because with them just changing their color this year to brown from that gray black, you can kind of keep tabs on your older belts from your newer belts. So again, something to keep track of. You know, another thing that I've seen in, in the woods and, and going out with different buddies and seeing their different sets, you know, sometimes you see those really big, huge oak trees, and there's no question about it, you know, these belts are only so big and can only get around so big of a tree. Uh, in this case here, Lone Wolf does sell an attachment that you basically just feed through, feed through the hole, and it will give you some additional length. I've seen a lot of people do some creative things where they're just tying 
not, and boy, you know what? I don't know if I wanted to take the chance and put my life on that stick. So keep that in mind. They do sell extensions of these. Try not to come up with some hodgepodge, add some extra rope to these. Uh, ratchet straps. You know, I like putting them on my stands as a little extra reinforcement. You know, you're reaching up there, you're grabbing onto the stand. Sometimes it's nice to make sure that you got more than one strap on. Uh, in the old days, I used, to use, I used to just use one strap, and I used to think that was enough. But you know what? Having two straps is going to make sure that that stand is that much more secure. Uh, I've been, a lot of times have been using ratchet straps around the bottom of my stands just to give them that nice, solid uh, extra setting in there. Uh, but same thing goes. You know, it is metal. It does get corrosive. They do rust. They can break. You got to check them. You know, taking these simple steps can really lead to having a much better hunting season. Now, in closing, there's one other tool I want to talk about that I use. When you're by yourself, this is also another handy little tool. It's made by Pine Ridge Archery. It's called the Easy Up. Again, some of us are more coordinated than others. You know what? I can tell you right now, if I had to go out and hang a stand with my dad, I guarantee my dad would say, you know what? I'd rather just hunt from the ground. But sometimes you got to get up in those trees to get a better look at what's going on. In this case, if you're older or you're just not as coordinated, Pine Ridge makes this Easy Up system. It's a piece of cake. Basically, you go up the tree once, you install this pulley system, you put a rope drops down, you hook it to your stand, you climb down, you pull the string, the stand will go up, you tie the rope off to a tree or a branch. If you're with a buddy, you can always just climb up once and send the rope down and he'll pull the stand up to you. But if you're by yourself, what you can do basically is climb down, pull up your stand, tie it off to a tree limb, and that stand will be waiting for you for when you climb back up. And with it being held by the rope, it gives you the opportunity to move that stand to get it right where you want before you step down on it and make sure it's safe. Again, guys, wear your safety harnesses. Check your straps. I know these linesman ropes seem like a lot of extra work, but I'll tell you what, the feeling you get from when you walk up to that stand and you click on and you know that you're safe from the moment you leave the ground, whether you fall from two foot, five foot, 10 foot, or 20 foot or higher, you're connected to this rope and it will save your life. Now for the part that we've all been waiting for. We're gonna wrap up this week's show with an in-depth look at the bucks that our teammates are gonna be chasing this fall. We're gonna start off with Tom Elford and Richie Music as they show us some of the bucks they have on their hit list. All right, guys, so here's our hit list from this year. Number one on my list, this deer right here. Big old double dropper. I actually shot this deer last year with a bow, high in the back, and I got this picture 15 days later. He's hopefully still around. Uh, he's a very unique deer, two drop tines, and a unicorn growing out of the back of his head. Um, a lot of these other deer, like this one here, live on the farm. I don't have any pictures of him but uh, he's an absolute giant, four, five, six years old, I'm not sure. Um, found his shed on the property and some standing beans. Some of these other deer here are from our farm up in Wisconsin. Richie and I hopefully will get a crack at them with a rifle, uh, but most of them are local, 15 miles from our shop. We hope to kill a monster this year. Well, we're on our way back from our Wyoming trip, which is an unbelievable amount of fun and just a great adventure. And actually, I got my computer here sitting in the car and we're scanning through trail camera photos, starting to think about what we're going to be, um, what our plans are for the fall. And um, this year we're chasing quite a few bucks. Some of them are in Minnesota, some of, our, of them are in Wisconsin. Um, the main ones for Wisconsin are a new buck that we found this year that we are calling Uncle Buck. It's a mainframe 10. This buck has a kicker off of its G2 on its left side. The thing is just a giant, and we only have a few pictures of him, but he just showed up in two, two different camera sites, so we're excited for him. Uh, another buck we're chasing we call the Old 10. Our cam tracker's got a few pictures of him, and he's been hitting that elevator ridge stand uh, that we did a little feature on earlier, so we're hoping that he'll show up. And then finally, we have a huge, uh, a huge 10-pointer we call Spinley. He's real thin, 
but uh, he's got real tall tines, and uh, we have quite a few pictures of him from last year and the year before. For our Minnesota hit list, we have the buck we call the big surprise. He was featured last season. I have three years worth of trail camera photos. He's a total freak. He's got 18 points. The neighbor found his sheds that score at 180. And um, I got pictures again, and I know where he is. I just, he's a hard buck to hunt, so hopefully we'll get a chance to get a crack at him. Another buck called Ears. He has um, a big drop tine off his left side that looks like a giant ear. That's why we call him Ears. And then finally, great cam tracker photo, one of the, my best photos of the year is of a buck we call Old Spice. Two years worth of photos of him. He's an old deer, probably six and a half or seven and a half maybe. He's old and big. And um, he's got big high, high brow tines with a little teeny little kicker off of his G2. And he's just, a, he'd be a great buck to take and certainly is on the hit list. So those are the bucks we're after this year. Well, I'm laid up on July 30th. I, uh... Blew my ACL out playing softball, so I chose to have surgery. Um, I had surgery been last Tuesday, and uh, I go in this Wednesday and have a meeting with the doctor and get my rehab started. So we have pretty pretty good year for bucks this year so far. I mean, I'm not really getting out and checking my trail cameras very much now, so kind of went down the drain. But I have a buck just on the edge of town. Then I got permission to lease the ground. Um, it is a buck we call City Limits. It's a great big, typical. He's got a split brow on his right side, and uh, he's kind of one of our hit, you know, main deer to go after early. Um, I'm just hoping to be able to be in the tree. Sitting in a soybean field off the highway that he's been coming to. He was here last night. I got a little bit of video of him, but he was a long ways away, so I moved in on him. Tucked in a fence row here, about 50 yards from where he was last night. I want to see how big this deer is. He's as big as I think he is. He should be in the 180s, I'd say. Um, we also have a deer on my grandpa, my grandpa's farms. Um, it's a great big five by five, and he's got a his G on his G3. He's got a hook. His G3 like doesn't grow, and it just comes out the side of his rack. So we really don't have him named yet. I mean, he's probably a 165 inch deer. Um, and then one of our farms the other day, I, right before I had my surgery, I went out and checked the camera and uh, we had a 10 pointer on there that we think will probably go in the 180s. So those are pretty much our th my three main deer. Well, it's the evening, August 21st. I just got back home, me and my little boy Avery. Uh, been out hanging stands since about 1.30. Hard to get a lot done with a four-year-old as compared to with Frankie since uh, he hurt his leg. My partner's gone, so that's been a pretty tough issue. But uh, checked his cameras today. Uh, glad to see we had some pictures of our deer we call City Limits. As far as from our farm or my farms go this year, which most of my farms Frankie can hunt, so I guess they're our deer. Uh, number one on my hit list would be Strict 9. I've hunted this deer for three years. Uh, Frankie almost killed him last year in the snow uh, and he's seen him one other, had an, we had another encounter with him at one other time didn't get any footage of him so he's definitely the one I'm after. He's right about 180 I think. He was 170 last year I have both of his sheds and I'd say he's right right around getting real pushing 180 so he's number one on my hit list. And I also got some really really good eight pointers this year. I got the buck we named Snowbird. He was uh, in, the, in the big bean field last year when we almost killed Strict 9 and he's really blown up. And then uh, I've got a big 8-pointer at my mother and father-in-law's that I call MJ and uh, he's tremendous. He is, he's one of them deer that's just gotten huge. He's really blown up, hopefully. It's one of them deer that I hope I don't see this year. I don't think I could pass him up without Frankie wrapping my harness around my neck and throw me out of the tree. Uh, but I really don't want to shoot him. I think he's one of those deer that has the potential to be a 200 incher. He's just got a huge eight point frame and he's starting to get some junk on it. And just, I think he's going to be something special. Well, those are some pretty impressive bucks that those guys are chasing. Now we're going to go down the hit list of the rest of the team members and see what they've got for this year. Dan Schaefer up in Wisconsin has got a couple bucks that he's been chasing since last fall. Nitschke, the big eight, and Stony. 
Now those are just a couple of the bucks that Dan is chasing on his family farm in northern Wisconsin. You know, when he's not hunting in Wisconsin, he spends quite a bit of time in the true north woods of Ontario, where last year he got a bunch of trail camera pictures of a great buck that he calls Salad Fingers. You know, this is a deer that he got a ton of daytime trail camera photos of, but sure enough, when Dan showed up to hunt for almost two weeks straight, the buck eluded him. Hopefully this buck is still alive because I know that he's the number one on Dan's hit list for this fall. Now we're gonna head south and check in with John Mueller. You know, it seems like every summer, John's got some monster whitetails that show up on his trail cameras. This year is definitely no exception. Number one on John's hit list, Baker's Dozen. This is a giant 13 point whitetail that is an absolute monster. We're talking 190 plus inch whitetail. I know he's number one by far on John's hit list. The next couple bucks you're gonna see are living in a field that John calls the Field of Dreams. You know, he put out this trail camera, it's only a couple miles from his house. Sure enough, within a couple of days, Bam, got a couple great photos of some really nice bucks. I know that he's hoping to put one of those early season Missouri tags to use on one of these deer. One of our newest pro staff members, Tom Lester, has also got some great deer that he's going to be chasing. Up on his lease in Minnesota, he's got a buck called Maximus. He's been chasing this deer for a couple of years. He is a giant. You can definitely tell that the monster racks have been doing their work on this particular buck. Another buck that Tom's chasing is called the Split Brow Buck. It's another giant southeast Minnesota whitetail Tom's hoping he might wrap his tag around this fall. You know, Tom is lucky enough to be going on a couple of outfitted hunts early this season as well. He's got some great trail camera photos from the places that he's going. I know he's going to be starting his year off in North Dakota with Hart J Outfitters. Then he's going to be making his way over to the famous Bluff Country Outfitters in Wisconsin where there's always some nice bucks around. It's August 22nd. I'm going through the final preparations for the upcoming bow season. I'm more excited about this deer season than any other in the past. Part of that is because I get to hunt a few states I've never hunted before, but mostly my son Justin turned 10 and he gets to deer hunt for the first time. My season kicks off September 9th when I head to North Dakota to hunt with Hart J Outfitters. Next, I'll be heading down to Buffalo County, Wisconsin to hunt with my good friend Tom Endebro of Bluff Country Outfitters. I'm really excited about this hunt. Tom always has great big bucks running around his property and you never know what to expect when you're in Buffalo County. When I get home, I'll be heading to my lease in Southeast Minnesota to go after a buck we call Maximus. Maximus is a mainframe 12 pointer with kickers off both G2s. I believe he's gross over 160 inches and he's five and a half years old. In October, I'll be doing everything I can to put my son on his first white tail ever. And then when the rut kicks in, I'm heading to Kansas. You know, as for Mike and myself, it never seems to fail. We just don't get a lot of good trail camera photos during the summertime. You know, some of the properties that we hunt are far away from home. We can't get trail cameras on them very often. Some of our other spots that are close to home just don't have good summer food sources. And much like late season, if you don't have good food during the summer, you're not going to have a lot of deer. I do have a couple bucks on my trail camera from last year close to home that I'm hoping we're going to have encounters with for this fall. One is a buck that I've been chasing. This will be the third year chasing him now. I call him Big Mac. He's probably going to be, I'm guessing, a six and a half, maybe a seven and a half year old deer this year. Giant deer. Not a huge rack, but a, a bruiser of a buck. Another deer is one that I call MB3, Mr. Buck the Third. Um, you know, I only got a couple pictures of this deer last year and he disappeared. I've never seen him, never found any sheds. I'm hoping that he's still around, you just never know. Now, fortunately for Mike and I, we do have a new property we picked up this year where we got pictures of a new buck that we're calling Hitch. Looks to be about a mid 140s 10 pointer uh, with a kicker on one side. You know, it's our first shooter buck that we've got all summer, so we're pretty excited about it. You know, we're calling him Hitch because the very first picture we got of him was taken on Mike's four-year winning anniversary. So who knows, maybe he'll be the lucky hunter who gets to wrap a tag around his rack come October. As far as myself, I'm not having the luck that I usually have when it comes to putting out trail cameras. This year, I've only got one shooter buck on my mind. His name is Floppy Ear. Otherwise, I still got a lot of cameras out, so hopefully some more bucks are going to show up. My favorite buck of all is the flyer buck. I have lost track of him since last year, and hopefully he's going to show up this year. Well, that's all the action we have in this episode of Bowhunter Die. Next week, we officially kick off the 2011 season with some exciting footage from Wyoming. 
A few of our staff members headed out west, and when the dust settled, four goats hit the ground, and it's going to be some action you're not going to want to miss. In the meantime, join with us on Facebook. Make sure you pull up the website, bowhunting.com. Check out our forums, articles, and all the other great stuff our site has to offer. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>